Hello, I'm Dan, a Senior Technical Account Manager here at the AWS office in Denver. Today, I'm going to show you how you can upload a large file and multiple parts to Amazon's Simple Storage Service. Let's get started. You can use the AWS CLI with either high-level AWS S3 commands or low-level AWS S3 API commands to upload large files to S3. It's a best practice to use AWS S3 commands, such as AWS S3 CP, for multi-part uploads and downloads. This is because AWS S3 commands automatically perform multi-part upload and download based on the file size. By default, AWS S3 commands use multi-part for uploads and downloads for files larger than 8 mebibyte and automatically split files into 8 mebibyte chunks. Both the multi-part size threshold and chunk size are configurable. Use AWS S3 API commands, such as AWS S3 API create multi-part upload, only when AWS S3 commands don't support a specific upload. For example, the multi-part upload involves multiple servers, you manually stop a multi-part upload and resume it later, or the AWS S3 command doesn't support a required request parameter. First, we are going to cover using the AWS S3 CP command to copy a large file to S3. In this demo, we'll use Cloud Shell in the console to execute these commands. This example uses the command AWS S3 CP to automatically perform a multi-part upload when the object is large, in this case, greater than 8 mebibytes. You can also use other AWS S3 commands that involve uploading objects into an S3 bucket. For example, AWS S3 Sync or AWS S3 MV. Objects that you upload as multiple parts to Amazon S3 have a different ETag format than objects that you use the traditional put request to upload. To store the MD5 checksum value of the source file as a reference, upload the file with a checksum value as custom metadata. To add the MD5 checksum value as custom metadata, include the optional parameter metadata MD5 and include the file's checksum in the upload command. In this example, we'll generate a checksum with OpenSSL and save it to the variable MD5 for later use. Please note that the commands needed to generate an MD5 checksum may vary based on your operating system and environment. Next, let's verify that the MD5 checksum was created. We can now upload the file and specify the MD5 checksum that we created in the last few steps. Let's verify that the MD5 checksum was set for the file that was just uploaded using a multi-part upload. You can use the AWS S3 API head object command to retrieve metadata about an S3 object. Now that we have covered the high-level AWS S3 commands, let's cover the low-level AWS S3 API commands. First, you'll want to split your file into multiple parts for the upload. If you're using a Linux-based operating system, you can use the split command. In this case, we'll split our file into eight mebibyte chunks. With the low-level S3 API commands, you first create a multi-part upload and then upload each chunk of the file. You'll use the provided upload ID that is generated as part of the output from the create multi-part upload command when you upload each chunk. In this example, we are saving the upload ID to a variable for use in later commands. Let's verify that the upload ID was generated in the last step. Before you upload the first portion of the split file, you can optionally calculate its MD5 checksum. If you don't specify the MD5 checksum, the AWS CLI will generate one for you prior to uploading the file to S3. You can use the same process that we used earlier in this demo to calculate the checksum, but this time you'll need to base64 encode the output. Once again, we are saving the output from the command to a variable for use in a later step. Verify that the MD5 checksum was generated in base64 encoded for the first portion of the multi-part upload. Now, you can upload the first part of your multi-part upload. Using the information you gathered from the earlier steps, run the following command to upload the first part. Be sure to record the provided e tag after each part is uploaded for a later step. In this example, we are using awk to extract the e tag from the command output. Repeat the upload part command for each portion of the file. In this scenario, we have four total chunks, so we'll perform the MD5 checksum calculation and upload three more times. To verify that all of the parts of the file were uploaded, you can use the list parts command. This will show you the size and e-tag of the parts that were uploaded to S3 for this multi-part upload. 
Using the E tags recorded from each uploaded part or from the list parts command, create a file called fileparts.json. In this file, you input the E tags and the associated part number that you used for each part upload. We'll use cat to show the contents of a file that we have already created. To finalize the multi-part upload, you can use the complete multi-part upload command. This command will use the multi-part upload file that you created in the previous step to confirm which parts of the upload should be included in the finalized object. Now that the multi-part upload has completed, you can use the list objects command to see the finalized object in the bucket. If you use the high level AWS S3 commands for a multi-part upload and the upload fails, then you must start a new multi-part upload. Multi-part upload failures occur due to either a timeout or manual cancellation. In most cases, the AWS CLI automatically cancels the multi-part upload and removes any multi-part files that you created. This process can take several minutes. If you use the AWS S3 API commands and the process is interrupted, then remove incomplete parts of the upload and then re-upload the parts. To remove the incomplete parts, use the abort incomplete multi-part upload lifecycle action or use AWS S3 API commands to remove the incomplete parts. Run the list multi-part uploads command to list incomplete multi-part file uploads. Replace the value for bucket with the name of your bucket. The command returns a message similar to the following one with any file parts that weren't processed. Record the upload ID since it will be used in the next step. Run the abort multi-part upload command to remove the incomplete parts, providing the bucket, key name, and upload ID from the previous step. Validate that you've deleted all of the incomplete multi-part uploads by running the list multi-part uploads command again. Now you know how to create a multi-part upload using high-level AWS S3 commands and low-level AWS S3 API commands. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS. Oh,